Jackson 3Ds in Illustrator. I will make the shape. Okay. And then I will use the, the window 3Ds. And then I will play with it until it doesn't look too horrible. <laughs> uh, so first thing what we'll do is we'll just import the file, uh, whatever the illustrator file you have done, right? So we can just go to file, import. Mm -hmm. And just go to desktop and we have this one uh, logo file which is created in uh, illustrator.ai. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll just import that as an uh, composition. Or uh, there is option over here you want to uh, import as footage uh, or you want to import as composition. So what I'll do is I'll just import as a composition over here. Yeah. So when I import as a composition, I'll get a separate layers for all the things. So I'll just import now. And double click on this and we have this logo which is over here and it is having two layers now so uh, which is this text layer for the logo and we have this company whatever the text company name is there so and we can also convert this into some kind of shape layers of after effects as well so we'll just copy this control c again create a new composition because inside illustrator we have created with 5 96 8 24 but inside After Effects, I want this resolution. Okay. I'll just press, uh, name it as logo. And name it. And just press OK. And I'll just press Control V. So when I press Control V, I have this uh, logo here. So this is the logo I just need to convert uh, now into a shape layer. So by default, it is the illustrator layer for right now. So to convert this into shape layer, you just right click over here. And uh, we have different mm -hmm. options uh, for that. You can just see it over here. So whatever this layers are there, right click. And uh, we have something called uh, convert to shape layers. Uh, create shape from this uh, vector file. OK. So what it has done is it has uh, made that as a After Effects shape layer now. So we can just see that this is After Effects shape layer. And uh, even this file will be also will be there. So again for this, whatever the text is there, right click, create, create shapes from vector layer. Now we don't require this layers. We already have this After Effects layers now. So if you want to scale the logo, can scale it to the size of uh, our composition. So I just want to little bit scale this as well as well as this one. And, it. and now we'll make this uh, layer as a 3D layer. Uh, so for that, uh, you can also select this layer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Little click. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any doubts? Yeah. No, no. I say so. To make it as a 3D, you click on the which which the little. Uh, icon ah. like in the last session uh, so now what we have to do is just name this so this is my logo and this is my text layer so through this logo uh, now to convert any of this uh, into a 3d what we have to do is we have to go to the composition settings first mm -hmm. and here we have an option for 3d render uh, so by default it will be classic 3D. Oh wait, wait, wait. Can you do it again? Yeah, you so you click a bit. Composition, composition uh -huh. settings. Uh -huh. And here we have 3D render. Okay. And inside this we need to change it into different options. So we have Cinema 4D and mm -hmm. Classic 3D. So I need to turn into Cinema 4D because Classic 3D will only give the depth. Uh, uh, in the distance between the two objects, uh, but inside Cinema 4D, uh, we'll be able to extrude the object. Uh, we can give the thickness to that particular 2D logo. So once I turn that, we can just press OK. And it's done. Uh, okay. So now you have to make this layer as a 3D. So I have a question. Um, so the shape you use, uh, the, the, the AI, it's already a vector, like um, 
you need to have the logo already made as a vector in Illustrator to make sure that when you vectorize it, it doesn't do random stuff, right? Uh, if you want, you can convert it. Otherwise, you don't need to convert it. Uh, because I wanted, if yeah. I want to edit something over here, some kind of logo, I need to convert that. Yeah, my question is, you need to make sure that the logo you put inside After Effects is made with Illustrator and has very clear vectors yeah. already done in Illustrator. So then you can convert it as a vector in After Effects in a click. Because yeah. I mean, a lot of clients, they're uh -huh. kind of done and they give you the logo in PNG. Okay. You, you've been there, I'm sure you've been there. You know, the, the client with the shitty logo from yeah. 2002 and you're just like, holy moly, like, fuck me. And so, yeah. So my question is that then if it happens, because it happened all the time yeah. Yeah, yeah. and you need to take the logo, you have to clean it into Illustrator, yeah, make it, it like, looks like something, not too shitty. And then you can put it in After Effects. Yeah. Like you can take the PNG and put it in After Effects and hope for the best. Or uh, what you can do is you can create that into Illustrator, all the logo. So whatever the uh, mm -hmm. logo they will give and you have to convert that into Illustrator and then you bring it. If you feel that After Effects also we can create, but if you feel that here it is little difficult or something, Illustrator yeah, because, is always there. Okay. Yeah, Illustrator is, yeah. is easier. Yeah. The pen tool is better. And make sure that you create all as a separate, separate layers uh, inside this. Suppose if you want to animate this logo uh, into separate pieces like this. So this piece will be separate, this piece will be separate, and this piece will be separate. So mm -hmm. you need to create all the three shapes in a three different layer inside Illustrator. Ah, okay. Yeah. So it will be easy. Uh, when we are animating, mm -hmm. we can adjust that uh, separately, and we have more control inside After Effects to animate that. Yeah, because they will come as different um, layers in After Effects. Like right now, you have the logo and the text. Yeah, so it will come as a different elements. Now we have only single element for this. So open the logo now. And as soon as you make this as a 3D, you can have this geometry option. And here we can see that there is something called extrusion depth. Okay, and what is occlusion depth? Uh, so what it will do it over here is uh, we will make that into a 3D uh, depth for this particular logo. Now it is 2D. So let me show you if I just add some kind of camera over here. So uh, right click new camera. And this logo also what I will do is I will just press R and let's rotate this into like this. So now you can see that there is no depth inside this logo. Wow, that's cool. Okay. There is no depth, there is no thickness for the logo. So what we have to do is we have to go to this extrusion depth now. So if I increase now, now you can oh, see this. That's so, the stuff you got in Illustrator also. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now you can also go over here and here we have this bevel option. So which will make this corner a little bit of uh, smooth. So if mm -hmm. I just go for convex, so it will make this corner a little smooth. So let me make this zero first. So now we can check that if I rotate this logo, it will be in a 3D uh, form or now. So okay. we need to add some kind of material also for this. Uh, now it is looking totally flat. Uh, so what we can do is we can just go to this material option. And mm -hmm. here we have some properties of that material. So how much shininess you want for this. So for the adjusting that, we have something called specular shyness. So if I increase that, specular shyness, and uh, what kind of logo you want? You want that logo to be looking like metallic. So metal should be 100. It will make the logo look metallic. So now it is nothing is it happening. It doesn't look the logo look metal. <laughs> yeah, so if it is 100, it will look like metallic, uh, like if you want a gold kind of logo or uh, anything like silver or chrome or logo so then we'll be adjusting this metal attribute if it is zero it is looks like plastic if it is a hundred it looks like metal but we don't see differences right yeah, now because we didn't add any kind of lights inside the scene right now okay so once you add the material now let's right click new 
and mm -hmm. we'll just add some point light. So let's add one point light, and mm -hmm. we have to choose here as a point. Okay. There are different types of lights. Spots. spots and a, a point and a spot. So it's we'll parallel just... is kind of obvious. I mean, it's parallel to the object. Ambient, parallel, it's like yes. yeah. Parallel yeah. light is like a directional light, so it will come from one particular direction. But all the light comes from a particular direction. Uh, no, no. Uh, it <laughs> it depends on the rotation of this uh, light, right? So if you see, if you want to create some kind of sunlight, uh, so it will be. Uh, Continuous and unlimited light source. This kind of lights are like directional light, we call it. Spot, we okay. can control it. Uh, inside the spot, we can control how much the cone angle we can control inside this spotlight uh, over here. So point light will emit from all directions. So I'll just use this point light right now. This okay? And ambient is like behind. It is, ambient light is just used to fill the scene. So if you feel that uh, the uh, scene is a little bit of dark and you just want to use as a filler, I will be just using this ambient light. Okay. So now we can just see that there is some kind of difference. We are seeing it inside this. If you just switch it off. Now you can see some kind of depth inside this mm -hmm. uh, yeah. object. Here you can see the depth as soon as I add the light. If you switch off, it is totally flat. If you switch on. You start seeing this bevel edges you are able to see now. Okay. So now uh, you can go to this view, four views. Mm -hmm. This is the top view uh, of my scene, right? And the light, whatever we have, we have it over here. So if you want to see the logo where it is, this is the logo position. So here we have the logo. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll just change the light position now. So go to the top view and just start moving it where the logo is. So I want this light to be kept on the side, left side of this. So you can see this now, only the edges, uh, I am seeing it over here, this edge, or here also. Okay, so top view, I keep the light over here. Now you can just see this. So what I'll do is I can increase the intensity of light little more so you'll be able to see more uh, only the edge for this okay so i'll just duplicate the light again and i have to move it towards left also so control d duplicate let's move towards left i'm seeing this only the outline of this so left side also i get the uh, outline right side so if you want the light to be on the top of this logo so you can go to the front view, again duplicate the light, control D, move it top as well. Let's move this on the top. So I'm just fixing the light from all the four directions. And let's again duplicate this light, control D and bottom also. So now I have four lights which is uh, on this side of that logo now. So some light you want in the front as well. So I can just add one more light, which will be in the front. So duplicate the same light. So let's duplicate. Control mm -hmm. D again. Move it on the center of the screen. And just move it little far. Now we are seeing the logo. And it is having total uh, shyness over there. So let's go to the one view now. And where you want to position this light. So if you want to position on this side, Want to position yeah. in the center or in this side? Mm -hmm. So now, uh, now I can see that material of this logo. So let's open the logo. We'll go to this material option, and inside this ah. you can adjust. Okay. So how much metallic you want? Now the specular shyness is too much. The difference. <laughs> now you can see the shyness now. So if it is totally zero. Mm hmm. And if it is like this, how much shyness you want for this, you can see. So it becomes totally flat for this. And we also have the reflection intensity, so how much reflectivity you want on the top of this. This is what the reflection intensity is there. If it is totally 100, uh, it will be totally reflective. Uh, what is in the environment, so that will reflect on the top of this. 
So these are the material attributes of this. So if you want the lights to be on or off, you can also switch on the lights over here. Accept light or don't want to accept the light. When it is zero, uh, so it doesn't accept any light. It just make the scene uh, totally flat. If it is on, now I'm seeing the lights are on. And now what we can do is we can parent everything to this logo. So let's uh, me add some more lights for this. So control D. Uh, I just want to shift it towards left. So where I want this more kind of depth over here, I can just start fixing it. So I feel this is fine for this logo. Now I can select all this light and you can parent with the logo. So if I rotate the logo also, uh, it will also give. So one more thing what I have to do is I have to create one more light which is behind this logo. Otherwise, uh, we cannot see the lighting. So control D again. Mm -hmm. And let's push it behind this. When I'm uh, rotating the logo, what will happen is we'll be seeing everything over there. So let's see this. Do we now. need that many lights? That's a lot of lights. Yeah, so depending on how you want the light to be required, uh, depending on that, how the logo has to be seen. Uh, you can use four light also. Uh, if I'm animating this light also going from left to right also, you can just see this, this kind of shine effect if you want on the logo. So I can also move the light from left to right. So that mm -hmm. we'll see how we can add that once I animate this. I'll show but how we so can uh, give that light swipe effect on the top of this logo. But do I need to put um, six lights each time or it's just for the effect you're trying to... on uh, your requirement. So if I want some different mm -hmm. color light on this side, so I can also change it. Now it is only white. So yeah. if I want to change it to some different color over here, whatever the color we want, uh, we can just change it. So since it is blue, it is blending with that. So let's press OK. And let's animate this logo now from which will come from the camera. So press P. Position. So this is the last position. I'll fix it. Go to around 25 frame. Control and click over here. So I can see. Where it is. This is around almost one second or let's go for two seconds. Mm -hmm. I want this logo to come and settle out over here in two seconds. So, and at the first frame where you want this logo. So you want it to be over here and I'll animate the rotation as well for this. Oh. So it will come from the back of the screen uh, over here and it will go mm -hmm. into that. So if you want through this, uh, so let's make it like this, move it more close. Here. Now if I just play that, it is just coming from the screen from the camera view and it is just settling over there. So we didn't animate any kind of rotation still now. So we're just moving the light from here to there. Mm. Uh, moving the logo. So it is just coming from the camera view and it is coming and settling over there. What if, um, let's say that I have this logo and it's in blue, but the blue is it's not really matching with the rest of the video. Like, is there a way I can change the I guess I can like change the color. Yeah, you can uh, change it. So if you select this logo now, I can just go mm -hmm. over here and change because it's oh. a shape layer. Oh, wow. Okay. The shape layer is made like that. Okay. Yeah. So now we can, if you want like this golden color. So if I just press okay now. But what if I, sorry, I always have stupid questions, but what if yeah. I want to put gradients inside? There's a lot of logos. This, no? So if you go to this fill option. Ah, okay. Yeah, usually I just click on no field. <laughs> I never check the other option. So whichever color you want, you can just choose it. So this to some other color if you want. Okay. And we have this. Okay, cool. So now it is coming like this. So uh, just from the back of the scene. And we want to do some kind of rotation as well. So let's give some kind of rotation keys uh, also for this logo. Let's make it over here. Okay, so press R. And we also have this rotation attribute for this. So I can just give some kind of rotation X, Y, Z, how you want this logo to be rotated. So give the key. 
and what I'll do is when it is inside the screen I'll just check how this rotation works so if I want like this like this mm -hmm. oh and the light turns yeah, when the light is parented to that ah yeah because you parented them yeah. okay so now this is what like, wow them. that's magic <laughs> If I want like multiple rotations over here, so I just do some kind of random rotations right now, so, like this okay. if you want, and this is what it will go, and then it will come and settle over here. So mm -hmm. how much rotation you want, you can just specify over here. So if you want only in one axis, uh, you can give uh, in only one axis that. Okay. So this is the orientation. So if I just make it delete this, so now we don't have. So you can animate this orientation. Or here we have individual control for rotation, so I can give that keyframe. Let's make it over here. And I just want to check the rotation of this, so you want like this. And also you want in this direction, or also in 3D direction like this. So what will happen now, it will go, it will come and settle over here. So let's do one by one. So I just want only the Y axis rotation, so Y. how much turn it has to take it is 1 into 320 so it will take that much rotation over there and then it will go and sit settle over so if you just want only uh, less rotation let's make it 90 for this and for this x so this is the x axis if you want even this rotation just give that rotation as well and let's make this keyframe to the first frame now if I just play this animation what will happen over here is so it will come into the screen and it is also rotating now so depending on what axis I am giving the rotation I will see that rotation over here and it goes so where is the position key if I just try to bring this also in the same position now we have so select everything now right click keyframe assistant easy ease so it will uh, slowly come and settle into this now you can see this logo so we can also add some kind of glow to that and uh, we can have separate separate layer as well this uh, uh, logo each piece can be also separate now I can just see. So this is what it has done now. Mm -hmm. Let's play this. So you make the position, like you change the position to make the um, logo comes from the front. Yeah. You just add rotation like. So this is my camera view now. So you can just see this is my camera. And this is what the animation which is happening over here. Yeah. So it is going behind the camera and it is coming through that. So wait, because oh, you did a, so the, the rotation you do is in 3D, right? Yeah. Okay. So now yeah, but it's moving in all the three axes, X, Y, and Z. Because it's possible because you made this shape 3D, huh. therefore you have three options of position. And then when you do the rotation, you have three options of rotation so you can make it like look cool. So uh, it will have this X axis, Y axis and Z axis. So if I just see this is X axis, uh, this is Y and uh, depth is nothing but the Z axis. So Z axis is the depth. So if you want to make the camera towards the camera, you have to move towards Z axis. Mm -hmm. so we have this and uh, let's add some kind of effects on the top of it or uh, see whatever this logo is there. So I'll just select this logo now. Go to effect and inside this we can just see there are different types of effects. So if you want to add some kind of uh, 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 duplicate effects over there or you want to blur that logo. So we also have this blur option or uh, if you want to uh, get some kind of light rays coming from that we also have different options over there. So what now I'll do is I'll just go for this option and if you want like some kind of stroke. Uh, we have this Vegas effect which will make that uh, logo look glow. So if I just add that on the top of it. Okay. I need to pre-compose. Like yeah. 
You like the glow effect. Each time you show me the glow effect. Or you can uh, also use this. See, already this is whole composition is done, right? So I'll just hide the text now. Uh, we can also use this as a uh, different composition since already all the things are done over here. So let's duplicate this control D and go to effect and we have different types of effects over here. So if I go for blur, uh, CC radial blur will make that here we need to go for straight zoom and I can increase this values over here. So what happens when it is in 3D, it will not show you. So that is the reason what we have to do it when it is like this. We have to pre-compose this or I have to drag and drop this whole logo animation into one more composition like this. So, uh, so now what is happening over here is we have only the logo which is coming from back and which is coming and sitting over here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now duplicate the same layer, uh, go to effect. Why do we want to duplicate the, 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 the layer? Uh, because I want to add some kind of rays, light rays coming from this. I want okay. like some kind of light rays coming out of this. So I'm just duplicating the same layer. Uh, so go to effect, blur and go for CC radial blur. I just show you this what will happen when you do that. So you get this kind of ah okay yeah we saw it in last class okay. and go to this and click on add so now we'll have this nice cool uh, rays which will come out of that add this. you say add to click on add ah, so here in the mode right so i have to go for additive uh, different blending modes like photoshop you have different ah. Okay. So I was I like, just make it as additive. Okay, add. Yeah. At the beginning, I thought you needed to click on adding the blur effect, and I was like, uh -huh. the fuck? Normally, you just click OK and then it add the effect. Like, <laughs> no, it's so the future. Now, what I can do it over here is I can move this uh, below this layer, so I can see this as a separate. Mm -hmm. Now I can see this raise. So if you want to increase some kind of glow inside this, you have to just duplicate that layer. Control D. Now mm -hmm. I can see that. Okay. So we can also add, uh, or uh, what we want to do it over here is, I want the rays to come and uh, in the end, uh, the rays should become zero. So I'm just starting the rays are there, and I'll just give the key for this amount. And after some time, what will happen is this, I will want to make it zero. And now you see this. I play. View this little low, little preview faster. Then it goes in. This is what we are getting. Cool. So the rays we can control it uh, over here. So now it is coming. And um, if you want I have to, yeah. Sorry, I just have a question. Like the um, the light effect under. Uh -huh. I understand it's a uh, it's a uh, it's another layer. You add the the blur effect. You add add fusion mode, yeah. but then something I didn't understand is that it fades away. Yeah. How did uh, you so go for it? that? Uh, this is the oh, amount that is what I need to animate it. Okay. So in the starting, the amount will be more. So if I just press U, so this is what I have okay. given the keyframe. But I could have changed the opacity also of this uh, slide to take it away, right? Oh, but we will not so have done the animation. You will not have done the Kind of going away like uh, I, yeah. I, you can also use that uh, opacity also so what i'll do is even uh, opacity press t opacity even this layer i want to bring the original logo now so i can just make it slowly zero both the things mm -hmm. you can play around. 
comes back to original uh, logo color. Okay. But then you, when you you had the logo, you made a copy and then you made a new composition with the two layers of the logo inside. Yeah, sometimes you go fast, so I need to ask you questions again because it's like pew pew pew, and for me it's eight o'clock, so I'm like wow 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 wow. <laughs> so uh, this is what our composition was. So uh, what I did is I have just drag and drop this composition into again mm -hmm. into this over here. Okay, so you created a new composition. Yeah, so I duplicated that. Now we'll get like this. So again, I just control D to duplicate this whole thing. Because on the 3D scene, it won't work. Some of the uh, plugins won't work, like motion blur and all. Uh, this uh, kind of rays are not working on this 3D layer. So what I'm doing wow. is I'm just making that into 2D layers. And I'm, then I'm adding this effect, sorry. How does the software understand that it's 2D? Because you took a 3D object, you copy past it, and then you make it as a 2D object. Uh, because here in the layers, right? So we these are like 2D now. Ah, uh, but the composition is 3D. Yeah. So inside that, there is everything is 3D. So it is like uh, one whole group. Uh, that whole group I am moving into a 2D composition. The group is 3D, but the object inside the group is 2D. Yeah. So when you so double click, everything is 3D. All the animations, everything is 3D. Then into second composition. Uh, all the both the two layers are 2D now. Okay. And uh, last, what I want it on the top of this logo over here is, so I'll just make it little bit past this rays to go. And I want some kind of light swipe on the top of this logo. Okay. Uh, so select this logo which is over here. Now go to effect. And inside this, uh, you can just see there are different options uh, for uh, doing that. So if I just go to the perspective, uh, here we have different options uh, for spotlight. If you want to add on the top of it, that also we can add it. Or mm -hmm. if I go to the stylize option, stylize option, we have also some kind of different light. So if you want to add some kind of glow, we have this. Uh, it just you want to add it, you can adjust this also. Or if I just go for, let's go for more, uh, one more thing over here is, uh, I just want to show this one, generate, and we ha also have it over here. So here we can just see that we have stroke option and light sweep. So this is what I wanted to show you that how we can make the use of this. So once the whole animation finishes, I need to use this kind of light sweep. See this one? Mm-hmm. Wait, what is this exactly? Uh, this is some kind of light which will come in the end end of the logo. Uh, so I'll just give the, this, this is a 2D light. So if I just mm -hmm. give the intensity for this, you can just see now. It gives more of that shine effect on the top of the logo. You would have seen that in off, after finishing the logo, there is some light which pass on the logo, some of the uh, logos. So that we yeah. can adjust it over here. So but how did you get this light? Which one? You click. Uh, how did you get this light again? Like you click like a wizard and then boop boop and wow, <laughs> where it comes from? So click on this logo animation, go to effect, mm -hmm. and inside this you have generate. Inside that we have a CC light sweep. Okay. So if I just click on that. Uh, it will come over here. So you can just see this is the point and which is over here. And then the position to... It. And if you feel that the intensity of this you want to increase little bit. So I can increase the intensity. Width. I'll get like this now. So if I animate it, you'll get this nice effect. So once the logo is finished over here, uh, what I'll do is I'll just give the keyframe for this center. Mm -hmm. This this is the point I'm giving the keyframe. Now, after a certain time, you just want this to go towards right like this. So this is what okay. the sweep will have. Okay. So if I just see this, this is what we have. And if I just check the animation for this. This. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So you just had to click on the clock and it set up the, um, the keys by itself. Yeah. Right. So and then you, you uh, move the position and then it's, when you stop moving it, it's save it again. Yeah. So now we get that nice metallic feel kind of uh, thing on the logo. So you yeah. can control it, how much you want this width. So if you want very sharp line like this, you want to make it a little more. Mm -hmm. We can also adjust the color of this light. See, whatever the color you want to change it. So mm -hmm. if you want like this green color to be going on the top of that. So just change the color, whichever you feel that you want to add on the top of it. You can just start adding that or if you want purple or white or if it is white is fine, you can click. Now it happens. Okay, looks super cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the down, you want that uh, text also to be visible now. So whatever, once the logo comes and forms, I just need to animate it. But what is happened over here is our timeline is still this point only. So I have to extend this timeline, go to composition, composition settings, and extend this timeline to around five seconds, zero five. Okay. So I can extend the time uh, line little bit more and adjust mm -hmm. this. So now we can just, okay. Where, what where will happen over here, the logo goes off. Where did you go again to change the length of the new composition and then so you settings? Here, okay. The duration. Okay. So that is the duration of the composition. If you want for 10 seconds, you can keep it for 10 seconds. And now these two layers, what we have to do is we need to increase the timing of this, right? It is still here only. So I cannot extend that. So Alt Control T. You need to press Alt Control T on your keyboard so I can extend this now till the end. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can also give this keyframe, you can extend it. So we have this time remap and you want to extend till this point. Now I can just extend that. Now I can just see this. So I'm just keeping that static for two more seconds uh, inside the scene. And if you want to adjust this light sweep little bit of more later, once it comes, I can increase little bit of more duration for this light sweep. After it settles over there, then this light sweep will start and go. Okay. Okay, uh, so whatever the light sweep is there, if you want to adjust the position of this, now we can just see that it is coming from here itself, right? So here uh, it is already there. So I don't want this to be at that frame. So what I'll do is only one frame, pull this out just one frame. So now it will start coming over there. Okay, because in the starting frame, I don't want that light sweep to be there inside the scene. So just one frame, I move that light out of this uh, frame. See this, so it is here. Just one frame, it will come back to the scene and then it goes smoothly. And let's mm -hmm. add the logo uh, for that now, whatever the layer we have it inside this. So this is the text layer. So we didn't animate this text layer. We'll just copy this, control C, paste it into this layer and switch on this. So this is my text layer, which is over here and I need to bring it in this. Okay, so how do I animate this kind of uh, text now? So once it comes over here and it forms, so either you want to fade it out, so press T, animate the opacity of this, make it zero. Mm -hmm. And here you make it. It will fade in over here and it will come. Press N. And we... Can you show me again what was the option to make the the object 3D. Yeah. So if you want to make this text also like a 3D or something. So yeah. first thing what you have to do is you have to go to composition settings and go to 3D render. 
Oh, yeah. Change this to cinema 4D. Okay. So that, once you have made that into cinema 4D, if I make this into 3D, automatically that options will come called extrusion depth. Mm -hmm. And then you make it feel. Oh. Yeah. So now it is already the 3D text is there. Uh, but for this, there is no light. If you want to add some kind of light to give more depth, uh, otherwise you won't see the depth for that. So add some light into the scene. Now you can see this. So this text is looking more uh, 3D now. So if I want to keep that, now you can just see the depth inside the text more properly. Mm -hmm. If you feel the intensity of this light is more, uh, you can reduce this. So this is the amount of intensity of the light. Or you mm -hmm. can also fade it like this. So totally black, then it will act like it is coming over there. Okay. So either you play with the opacity or you can also play with the light over here. I just want to fix this one. Now it is fine. I got this nice uh, animation over here. So this logo will come. If you want uh, something in the background now, right? So uh, we can also add some kind of background for this if you feel that black is totally. So right click new, solid. Let's give some kind of dark blue background for this. Press OK. And place it over here. And if you want this to be fade out, what I can do is I can just use this mask uh, ellipse tool. Just drag this and press F and give feather for that. So once I give the feather, it will blend nicely. Got it? Mm -hmm. okay. So just create a solid, add a mask, and increase this feather value for this. So anytime you feel that this color has to be changed, so go to layer, solid settings, and I can also change the color of this to whichever color you want. So suppose if you want like this, you want Whichever the color suits for that, you can choose that. Press OK. And let's have. Now I'm having this. Uh, logo but as why well. are you doing a mask? You could make just a circle and uh, make so it. Because if, it, if I just don't give that, it will be like flat. Mm, okay. This is a flat solid. Uh, you but can also add do some. Fusion, yeah. Add Fusion gives this cool neon style in After Effects. Uh, oh, there yes. is less fusion option than in Photoshop. Wow, there is like four or five. This one? Yes. No, I mean like the fusion options there is in Photoshop, in, in After Effects is so less complex than in Photoshop because Photoshop, you look at the fusion option, like the bending option, and you just like, whoa, there is like a million of them. And usually no one knows how to use them. Like you just click on everything until you find something nice. And here there is like five. You know, I, I have a friend, he's a professional designer for years. Mm. And I ask him, like, what are the blending options? Like, what's what's the meaning goes with what? Like, because I don't understand. I just click on everything each time. And he told me, same for me, for 10 years. I'm like, damn. Uh, so, okay. uh... Here there is like two or five, so it's easier. I mean, add, subtract, it's kind of easy going, like. Just yeah, so what happens inside this uh, blending mode over here, right? So if I'm just going for this, uh, so it will add more brightness to the uh, footage. So wherever the highlight part is there, it will make more highlighted when you do the add. So it affects the highlight part of the image when you are using this. When you are using this overlay and all this effect on the mid-tones uh, mid of the image. So what is the gray part of the image is? that will affect this uh, over here. So if I'm just doing overlay and all this thing. And this affect the shadow part of the image, whatever the dark part of the image is there. And if you want to remove that, I'll be using this kind of uh, modes over here. So if I just show you some image, if I have uh, something on the top, desktop it is not there. It is not there. Uh, so if I just show you some kind of, let's show, create a solid. Gradient solid and press 
shape layer so right click new shape layer and if I just create this uh, shape layer into different color let's make it white and this one black this is what the shape layer is right now Mm -hmm. okay. So what will happen when I change this to a uh, mode called multiply? So what will happen is when I change it into multiply, whatever is white part is there uh, that will go up. So if I just click on this multiply, let's click on this multiply. So now we can see that white part becomes transparent over here. When I change it into screen, black part will become transparent and white part remains over there. That's what the screen will do. So screen, add or something, what will happen is it will remove the black and uh, it, uh, it will uh, make keep the white more highlighted. Highlighted part it keeps. So when I go for this uh, multiply over here, so it removes that white part from the back, but it keeps the dark part inside the image. And when you go for overlay, you can just see that what is happening. The gray part, everything becomes transparent over here. Except the gray part. Gray part? There is no gray part. There is blue, uh, black. There's a gradient, right? So if I just show you. This. Ah, the gradient part. <laughs> yeah, this one. It's like there is no gray. Yeah. So here white. Here it is little bit of gray color, then black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The transparent part. So uh, this is what it will happen inside this uh, blending mode. So when I'm just changing it over here. So if you want to blend uh, two images over here, you can also use this overlap and all this uh, attribute. Yeah, all the crazy. Yeah, so yeah, so this is what we have now. So we can just see this how it works, uh, and we have this logo, uh, which is done. Mm -hmm. And if you want to add some kind of music for that, you can also go for. Uh, really? Uh, yeah, it's After Effects. You can put music actually. Uh, you can add some kind of music. So uh, what is that? Website was there for this. Have I given the website for you? Hmm? Website for downloading the music? Uh, no, usually I just put free music on Google and like. Yeah, like music. So there is one thing uh, called Mix Kit. Mm -hmm. You go for this website. Here you will have uh, lots of nice musics. Okay. So if you want to have some kind of sound effects, you can also go for the sound effects. You have lots of sound effects. So if you want that fast. So whichever you feel that. So this is... Well, I don't hear this one. Uh, yeah, well, I'll add this. Let's download this now. Okay. And let's use this over here. So what I'll do is I'll just drag and drop this into After Effects. Yeah, that's my style. And I can just open that over here, uh, go to the audio, waveform, and we have this audio. So press Shift 0 to here with the audio. Or we can also press Preview. So if you're not able to hear over here, so we need to make sure that I have to set up that uh, over here. So go to preference and here audio hardware, edit preference audio hardware and I need to make sure that I can choose that uh, whatever the audio output is over here. So here it will be the speaker. So if I just want to use this as a speaker, I can use that as a speaker and I can use that. I need to check which is that speaker over here first. Uh, let's check that one. Hardware. Things over here first. Okay. Well, I don't hear the sound, but I imagine. <laughs> okay. I don't know why it is uh, not visible. Well, it's okay. I, I don't need to hear. It's still morning here. So it will give that kind of effect on the top of the logo and we have this. Uh, you can see that. So if you feel that the sound has to 
come after a certain time so you can also shift the timeline over here and from where you want that audio suppose in this part i want the audio to be so i can just shift that over here uh so i got a last questions for the um, the blue behind huh. you did a square and then you put a mask with the shape of a circle and you add the fusion mode add sure. to get the cool like smooth this is the feather, uh, mask feather so if i press f on my yeah. keyboard, it will give this feather option so that i can increase it so that is like uh, if okay. i just make it zero right now so it will be yeah, with sharp. yeah okay so that is why i'm just adjusting this mask feather to make it soft like this okay it is just a layer and i'm just cutting that layer and to make that edges softer i'm adjusting this mask feather okay and let's render this so go to composition add to render queue uh, what format i want to render this quick time and we have this apple pro res so you can do whichever the thing you want to render now render it on this desktop so if i go for desktop we have this and let's render this once it is rendered uh, we will have everything uh, done so it started rendering now okay Uh, so in this any doubt you have now we can uh, hope you got to know how to uh, bring this element oh, it's very helpful yeah. you know I, I work in a company and one guy could do it okay. and everybody was like wow he's so cool because he can do it and i was super frustrated because i was like i'm sure it's not super complex yeah. but at this time i had zero knowledge in after effects and because we had to partner together he was doing this and i had to do the rest of the videos Okay. And uh, yeah, I was jealous, and I was like, one day I'm gonna learn how to do it. And now, fuck it, now motherfucker, I know how to do it. I'm as good as you. <laughs> so thank you. So, uh, I will share you some other resources, also online resources, so you can uh, study more about this logo animation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you you have to try some kind of logo animation. So the same thing you can use for submission of uh, AID, right? Okay. So that will be uh, good for your certification. So you can uh, some of this uh, logo animation you can submit and uh, anything what uh, that project if you are done, if you have the time to finish that to try finishing that project. So I have to do the two video animation, two minute video animation, right? Yeah. Okay. So it can okay. be commercials. You can do for sixty second also. So it is fine. Ah, okay. Oh, it was two or three minutes. When you told me two or three minutes, I was like, holy shit. <laughs> That's long. It's long. Uh, so I'd like uh, that McDonald's ad, if you see that, no? So that is only for 60 uh, seconds. Uh, that also you can try. Which what McDonald's sign? McDonald's, if you just show you inside the YouTube. Uh, if you just search for... Oh, uh, yeah. I think I McD showed you. Yeah, McD Did ad is there, no? Motion graphics. No, you haven't shown me. Graphics. Uh, so if you see that. It's death every day. Here's everything you need to know about the new McDonald's app. It's all the things you love about McDonald's at your fingertips. Choose from a range of amazing deals on your favorite menu items and select the deal you want. A timer will show how much time.
checking out with just your deal in your order will result in an error message. As the minimum... I'm sure you've heard how Grammarly improves your writing, but let me tell you how Grammarly business... Are you hungry? Not to worry. We are presenting to you best food delivery app, Heva Food. In Heva Food app you can select over 500 restaurants. You can choose your favorite food and add them to the cart. Heva Food app provides oh, wait, you for easy this one, and like convenient paying up. You have to do up. all the elements in the phone. Uh, that if you get uh, some kind of app, right? If you go for uh, free pick, uh, there you can get all these uh, elements of the design. Everything is there. Okay. Yeah. So I think free pick, uh, you can find a lot of even the characters you can find. Yeah, yeah, you, don't you have can. Have to create anything. You have to just focus on animating that. So if you just search for. Uh, I'm just too sad with free pick because I used to use the account of a client that forgot to cancel his account for four years and he remembered to cancel his account last month. <laughs> I was been four years I was using a premium account for free. Okay, so uh, so you can use this. You see this, there is a lot of uh, character as well over here. So depending on the story, what which matches, you can try uh, taking that one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this kind of video will be good enough for, for, for your certification. Hungry? Graphics, uh, which tells the whole story and uh, finally you convey with this uh, logo, final brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lots of work for Morgan. Always. Okay, then, uh, so see you on uh, Thursday. I'll be showing you how to use the templates. Uh, for that. Thank you. Okay. Okay then. See you.